So now we're going to move on to taking the clamp off that connects the EGR crossover pipe to the EGR bypass valve. Now this is the exact same style clamp that's located under the assembly that I talked about a few minutes ago. That depending on how it's rotated, that that shaft right there could actually prevent that bracket from clearing when we tried to take the electrical portion out. So what we're going to do is go ahead and back off on that 11 millimeter nut. We're going to take it the majority of the way up. We don't have to take it all the way off. Just grab a deep 11 millimeter socket. Keep an eye on it. See where it's at. Alright, so depending on if this clamp has ever been off or not, it may come off easy, it may be stuck to the pipes. So you may have to get a flat tip screwdriver or mini pry bar in here to break the V portion of the clamp loose. This portion's coming up, but let's say this side was stuck, we'd have to pop it loose. There are three sections that create that circle. They need to be broke loose. Once they're broke loose, you can then rotate it around. We can squeeze in on the clamp, and now we can actually open it up by spreading it apart. Just rotate it around and work on getting it spread enough to where you can actually clear the pipe. So now the clamp's off, we need to try to get some flex out of this crossover pipe so that way we can get it loose and we can actually clear everything and come up. We're going to go ahead and take the clamp off that's on the opposite side of this pipe at the EGR valve. So if we follow the tube, it leads directly to the EGR valve. And on the opposite end, we've got the exact same style clamp that we just dealt with. So we're going to back off on the 11 millimeter all the way to almost to the end of the shaft. Then we're going to see if we can rotate it. If we can, wonderful. If not, we're going to have to break those three sections of the V clamp loose. Then we can rotate it and get the clamp off. One thing to keep in mind when you're going back with this clamp is it needs to be oriented in a certain position. And the reason why is you still got that plastic cover that goes off that had those four 8 millimeter bolts. So if this shaft was sticking up, you wouldn't be able to get the cover on. So try to keep it along a parallel line such as this. So back it off. This should be enough. This one's actually free and rotating. So we do the same procedure. We squeeze in, release the lock, pull out, spread it, and we got our clamp off. Now we can just go ahead and grab it, give it a good yank, and now we've got some play and movement. Now there is a seal that goes between here that we'll need to replace, and I'll show you that. So that crossover pipe that went from the EGR valve over to the bypass valve has two seals. We've got a flat, thin washer style that goes at the bypass valve, and on the other end you've got this cone-shaped style that goes on the EGR valve. This one's got a texture to it, some kind of a composite over metal, so it does need to be cleaned very well because some of it will stick to the tube, some of it will stick to the EGR valve. This style really just stays flat and doesn't have any issues. It still does not hurt to clean the surface that both sides of this come in contact with, but definitely on this one, make sure you clean it very well. So now, moving on to the next step, we're going to work on getting this heat shield off. This portion up here is part of it. It uses the mounting bolts that actually attach the valve to the manifold. So we've got two 10 millimeter nuts that we need to take off. And once you got them off, all you got to do is lift straight up to take that heat shield off. So with the heat shield out of the way, you can see two of the four studded bolts that attach the valve to the manifold. Now three of them are accessible now. Now the bottom one, the heat shield that's on the side, well it's got one of those 10 millimeter nuts we've got to take off first. Once we get that off, then all four of these can be accessed, taken off, and then we can actually take the valve off the engine. So we're going to move over to the heat shield. So from this angle, you can see the heat shield a little bit and you can actually see that 10 millimeter nut that we've got to take off. We've also got a total of two 8 millimeters along this side, but for now we're going to work on that. Now you don't have a lot of clearance between that and this mounting point right here on the engine, so a good ratchet wrench will work great in this situation. Just break it loose and start taking it off. So if you look at the bottom of the heat shield, you'll see the two remaining 8 millimeters I've been talking about. Once we get those off, we can actually reposition the heat shield. 
We're not going to be taking it completely off. The reason why is we've got too much stuff still in the way. There's not enough clearance and we don't need to fight with it to get it out. We just need to reposition it so that we can get to that bottom studded bolt. It's flexible sheet metal. You're not going to damage it. You can actually bend the edges slightly. That way we can move it out of the way, get to that studded bolt and not have any problems. Now one thing I haven't touched on yet is actually disconnecting the batteries. And the reason why that might come up is the fact that we're dealing with the alternator right here. And there's a positive battery cable going to it, which is just a couple inches away from one of those 8mm bolts. So depending on the type of person you are and how cautious you are, you may want to go ahead and disconnect both the negative cables. That way you don't accidentally arc against that positive terminal while trying to get that 8mm bolt off. So at this point, let's go ahead and proceed with getting them off. So now we can go ahead and grab the heat shield, move it forward, and we're going to bend the upper tab back a little bit. That way we can get to that studded bolt now. So at this point we're ready to get those four studded bolts off so we can take the EGR bypass valve off the manifold. Upper two, you can use a typical deep 10 millimeter socket. You can also use that ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench that we use for that heat shield nut. You can use it on that one. Down here is going to be a little tight. Get whatever you can to get in there. Grab that 10 millimeter ratchet wrench like I talked about earlier. Just slowly work it off. Now what I found that works best for that bottom 10 millimeter studded bolt is a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive because they're not really super deep and then a quarter inch breaker bar usually because it takes a lot of leverage to get it loose most quarter inch ratchets sometimes will strip out if you put too much force on them. Once I get it broke loose, I can use a normal quarter inch ratchet. But for now, this is what I'm going to use to break it loose. Because I don't have a lot of clearance down in there. As you can see, the assembly is starting to move now. So now that I've got it broke loose, I can start using a ratchet instead of this breaker bar. But that's what I found that works best in that bottom back corner. Alright, so we've got all the fasteners loose from the valve, we've got the mounting bracket bolts off, we've got the connector taken loose, and we've got the tube disconnected going over to the EGR valve. We're now ready to just pick up the assembly and take it off the vehicle. Now the valve assembly has been removed, there's really only one more step you need to do before reinstalling everything, and that's prepping and cleaning all the gasket surfaces. That includes the flange that's right here, that has a new metal gasket that we're going to be installing. We've also got the flat style washer type seal that I showed you earlier that goes here. And on the other end of this crossover tube, we've got that composite cone shaped style gasket. That's the one you've got to spend most of your time cleaning. Now when you go back with everything, the installation is just the opposite of removal. So just follow the steps in reverse order and you shouldn't have any problems. Now as far as these four 10 millimeter studded bolts that hold the valve to the manifold, they do have a torque spec and that is going to be 18 foot-pounds. 18 foot-pounds on these four bolts. Now the clamps as well that we took off, they have a torque spec and you can damage them if you over tighten them. And the clamps are going to be 89 inch pounds. 89 inch pounds on this side of the crossover pipe and also on the other side that goes to the EGR valve. Now there's one last thing we need to do before we get rid of this old assembly and it's to take this item off. This will be getting reused on the new valve. It attaches to the bracket for the electrical portion and it's one of the threaded inserts that holds an 8 millimeter bolt that holds that plastic cover on the front of the cylinder head. The first item we took off same item that the old dipstick goes through. So make sure you take this off and reuse it. There you have it. Now you know everything that's involved when it comes time to remove and replace that EGR cooler bypass valve. Now as far as the part replacement, where you're going to get it from, 
you can either get it through Cummins itself or you can go through your local Dodge dealership. Those are the two recommended places that I would purchase it from. You're going to get a more reliable component. The ones I've seen aftermarket, those that do make it, I'm not really impressed with the quality. So stick with the OEM whenever possible. Now when it comes time to the gaskets, one place you can go is genosgarage.com. They've got the gaskets that we used in the video. And for me personally, when I think of Dodge Cummins, I think of Geno's Garage because that's the only thing they specialize in. While you're there getting your gaskets, you might want to order your fuel filters, your oil filters, tools to do some of these jobs, some of your interior components, accessories, and also some of the apparel. They've got all that stuff mentioned right here in genosgarage.com. So if you liked the video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's videos, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can always email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, please hit the subscribe button. If you're a returning subscriber, please make sure to hit the bell icon next to that subscribe button. That way you get notified instantly when videos such as this get uploaded. Also, if you shop on Amazon, please feel free to use the link that's in the description below this video. And any purchases that you make will help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching all these videos.